Hi, here we are. We're going to talk about another exciting art literacy project. This is our November project, and we're going to um, look at the artist Norman Rockwell. And so we are starting to work on our hands-on project for you. Here are our supplies um, that you will need for this project. We're going to use colored pencils. The students have their own, but we have um, quite a few sets in the art literacy closet, and I'll put them on the cart for you. Um, you're going to need scissors. You're going to need a glue stick per student. Um, a ruler you won't need for each student, but it's handy to have a couple of them. And then we're going to use white construction paper. Um, so it's a little stiffer than regular paper, but not too bad, and it's 9 by 12. And that's what we're going to work with. On that, we will be making a magazine cover because Norman Rockwell was very famous for working at the Saturday Evening Post for, I don't know, 30 plus years. Um, and he made these great illustrations on the cover. People looked forward to them. Um, and those covers told a story about what was going on in their world. And he covered uh, the Depression, he covered World War II, he covered after the war. Um, so all of those images, a lot of them are very famous, and they all tell some sort of a story. That's what he was very good at doing with his pictures. So we're going to have a magazine banner. We have the Hawk Talk, which is the magazine for the arts, and that is our banner. That will be, um, you'll want to copy that onto your 9x12 um, piece of white construction paper, and that will be for every student. We have it, and it's Hawk Talk magazine for the arts. And within this banner, um, the students will actually write their own uh, headline or title for their piece um, that they'll come up with whatever story they're trying to tell. And maybe something like Winter is Here, um, as in one of our examples. And this is similar to what a finished example may look like. Um, so we're going to work with examples and we're going to storyboard for the students. And I have cut these out of our other, um, another piece of work paper. You'll give each student a half a sheet to start with. They're going to draw one symbol on it and then we'll cut it out and they'll have multiple elements that they'll be able to move around. So the themes we're going to work with. You're going to tell each student to start with maybe a holiday theme. We have all the holidays to choose from. Our winter holidays coming up. Um, we'll have Valentine's Day, Easter, Fourth of July, um, a birthday, a special occasion for them, maybe a vacation. Any of those are good themes that they can start to think of symbols that um, represent that to them. So a Hawaiian vacation, they may think of um, a flower lay, a beautiful flower, or a palm tree. Um, and they can draw those. So that would be their first symbol, give them a half a sheet of paper and have them draw something rather large. I think we have going on some pumpkins for Halloween time so they could draw one large pumpkin on the sheet. It can go either way, this way too. Um, here we have a tree that was drawn from a half sheet of paper. And then they're going to cut out that symbol. And the way we want them to cut it out, for younger students, maybe just have them draw a circle around the, their object, their symbol, and cut it out rather quickly. So that's something they can do, rather than we don't want them to go in and try and cut out each contour that's too time consuming um, and too complicated. So once they get at least one element, then they're going to place it on their banner. And we want to talk about foreground and background for the students. So you want to have them think about an imaginary line um, about in the middle of the paper. And in, on the bottom will be the foreground. And in the back, um, on the top of the paper, will be the background. Objects are larger in the foreground. So a large object may go closer to the front of the paper. Um, and this is a tree, and I have a little bit of room, and I can even go over the, the border if I like. I can just write my title right around it. And we can fill in these lines later with the colored pencils. If that's bothering your students, I'll show you how to do that. So I want to set my elements. I might want to cut out a few more. Here I have a snowman. This is another element that I created. All right, and I can place it there. And then I have a moon. So as we're talking about foreground and background, objects in the foreground should be 
larger than objects in the background. So unless I'm gonna put this moon right up here close to the front, it's starting to look a little too big. So I need to make a smaller moon and put that um, in the background and that looks a little better composition wise. So we're having the students move elements around in order to see what it looks like if we change the composition. Certainly putting a large snowman like that in the back starts to seem a little odd for our composition. So this is where they may get the idea of what to go where um, and move things around. And if I leave this out, oh, it looks a little empty there. But what if I move this here? Well, now it's not too bad. I can put the tree here and the snowman could go kind of in front that way. And I could draw some other things. We're gonna add a little bit, a suggestion of a um, lower ground and sky later. Okay, so they can move that around. Then you'll have your student paste those down. You'll need to help them get the edges down nice and clean as we're working. It's about to cut. So I decided to do a Thanksgiving dinner. We have that coming up here in November. So I started with a table. So that's my large item that I am drawing. And then I'm working on some smaller pieces to add to my tabletop. And I'm going to do um, an outing to a pumpkin farm with a corn maze, because we just recently did that. And so I have some pumpkins and I'm going to make an attempt with a corn maze, or at least a corn stalk. I don't know what the maze is gonna look like, but it'll come together, I think, so. Yeah. I'm gonna glue those into place. I'll do this on the work paper. Uh, make sure they get the edges down, and younger students will definitely need some help with this. And if it's coming up a little bit, just stick a little more glue under there. And then you'll want to have the student work on their titles. So we have um, quite a few good titles going on. So what we could name this one, maybe um, Winter Fun. Or how about Quiet Night? <laughs> So I'm going to draw in my lines here, and look, I'm just drawing right over the paper I've pasted down. And I can always add this to make sure I get a little more color over there. Mm -hmm. 
and let's talk about a couple of drawing techniques to help out your students. So um, we're drawing on a separate sheet of paper and that is partly so that we have the ability to um, redo it if we really need, but also it's forgiving. Um, if we make a line and we don't like that line, we have ways of adding backgrounds um, to cover up the lines. Here's, here's actually the one I want. Okay. So I have this kind of random line down here drawn. Well, I'm gonna start adding um, a floor to this. And I'm just gonna add sort of the suggestion of a rug. All right, which I can do with just a couple of lines. And I can choose how I want to fill in that rug. But see, even just that, and now I don't really see my mistake lines anymore. Um, erasing lines, notice these pencils don't have erasers. And the reason for that is so that when you make a line, if it's not where you want the spot to be, you want to use that as a reference. So don't just erase it. If I'm trying to draw um, a curved line and I don't like the way that curve is. If I erase it, I can't use it as a reference. Now I want maybe a curve like that's more like that. Ah, oh, that's so much better. And look, now I can incorporate that other mistake into my full picture. Um, there's also techniques in terms of how to color in something. So you want to have maybe all of your pencil marks and strokes go in one direction. I can do it in another direction, um, diagonal, horizontal, vertical strokes. I can make my strokes really short and tight. I can do them really long. You can color things in loosely, um, or you can color them in very tightly. And generally, if you really want something to fill in them, these pencils do a nice job. Look how strong that color is. I can keep going over it and it'll really um, fill in and it looks almost like a marker, which is nice. You can also do um, circles to color things in. It all gives it different textures and there's cross hatching where you're making small lines and keep going. Okay. Other techniques to look at, bring a sharpener um, to class because you wanna get maybe a fine line as you're drawing or you can tilt the pencil a little bit and you're gonna get a thicker line. Or I can really lay it on its side and I get a very thick line. All right, to fill in a larger area. For your young students, as they start drawing in a background, they can use crayons if they prefer, if the pencil's just taking them a little too long because many of them will really want this to be fully colored in. Um, that just often is how they think. But, um, as your older students, they may start to feel like they want to add some texture. So maybe I want to add texture to the rug by um, coloring it with a looser, thicker line. But I could add some texture by then cross-hatching it. You know, it's going to make it look different. Um, so you can just sort of decide how you want to do that, whether you want to color it in thickly. Um, so that's one thing that we can do. Once you get your elements pasted on, you can start to add, and it's pretty easy to go in there and be pretty exact with these. You just go around and it just takes a little patience to get in there, but um, you can color it all in. So in this picture, um, I had pumpkins in various sizes, and the one that's the biggest, that's closest to um, your point of view, I had it going off the page a bit, and then from there I can just cut it off alongside the the paper so that looks like it just um, put the perspective having it being closer to you. So that's just one example. I think it looks really so good. I'm just gonna try to fill up the rest of the background.